We've been talking about workflow. I'd like to show you a graphic representation of my workflow, my optimization pyramid. You'll notice at the bottom it's nice and broad, and at the top it's narrow, just like a real pyramid. It's actually a great illustration of the optimization process. You begin with the large issues, and slowly through a process of refinement, you reach the top, where you output, and ink hits paper. First, in the raw processor, I deal with the foundational issues. These are adjustments I want to make early on in the process. Things like noise reduction, shadow and highlight recovery, and warping and alignment issues. Once this is done, I move on to global LHS adjustments, luminosity, hue, and saturation. I usually pick my white balance first and then move on to the luminosity adjustments, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadow, whites, and blacks. I do about 95% of my luminosity adjustments in RAW. Unless there's a compelling reason to make hue and saturation adjustments in RAW, I usually save those adjustments for Photoshop. So before I export to Photoshop, I check to see if there are any minor spots that I can eliminate. Now I export my image into Photoshop where I refine my foundational adjustments. A good example of a refinement is applying a shadow and highlights adjustment. RAW is great at recovering highlight and shadow tonal range, but it doesn't restore the contour or contrast in those tonal ranges. The Shadow on Highlights command in Photoshop is a very effective way of pulling out hidden information in both shadow and highlights, and this is not available in the RAW processor. I then create a non-destructive crop, a technique I developed that allows me to indicate crop early on in the process and be able to alter the crop anytime during the optimization process. It may not be useful for everyone, but it does help me to focus on the important elements of the image. Further refinement of alignment issues is also something I commonly do here. Now I do major editing, retouching. I remove any distracting elements, and I accomplish this on a separate blank layer in case I change my mind later in the process. Global luminosity, hue, and saturation adjustments are next. This is also a refinement of what was done in my RAW processor. I employ the appropriate blending modes when making my adjustments. I deal with luminosity issues first, followed by hue, then saturation. In practice, a blending mode of color is usually a safe choice in place of doing a specific hue or saturation blending mode. After I make my global adjustments, I take my hands off my mouse and I look at where I am. I identify specific areas of concern and sometimes reconsider my destination strategy. With that examination complete, I now apply regional LHS adjustments. These are adjustments made to the specific regions of concern modified with a mask. I once again apply the appropriate blending modes to my adjustments. Local adjustments are adjustments that are painted in local areas. They can be luminous adjustments as well as hue and saturation. The most common local adjustment is a light and dark, commonly called a burn and dodge layer. At this point, I determine if regional sharpening, blurring, or noise could benefit the sense of dimension. If so, I use a pixel layer with a mask and apply the effect to the layer. Since the layer is pixel-based, it must reside at the top of the existing pixel layers. Cover layers, by their nature, must occupy the top of your layer stack. These are layers like vignette and midtone contrast. With my adjustments complete, I now soft proof my image and create a set of minor adjustments, which is what we call output specific adjustments. And these compensate for the specific profile's inability to provide 100% accurate color. Now last comes output sharpening. Sharpening is not a one size fits all process. It's resolution, size, and frequency dependent. Output sharpening is only meant to help reduce the dot gain of the paper you're printing to. So I'm now ready to send my image to the printer and make my first proof. If I've done everything right, that's probably the only proof I'll need to make. So following a structured workflow will create consistency and efficiency in your work.